The following program contains violence, disturbing imagery, nudity, and, oh my god, why are you even watching this? Just run away. This shit is going to give you nightmares. Chainsaw impression is tough on the larynx, man. Getting pretty close there. Been working on it for about seven months now. Anyway, how the hell are ya? I hope tonight's show is finding you all in great spirit and health. Happy Thanksgiving. You know, while we're all snuggled up next to the fire in our nice warm homes with a hot eggnog toddy, just not too far from you, there's a Sasquatch. Feeling exactly the same way. All warm and cozy and a smelly, dark, cold cave, just sitting there chewing on an elk liver, sipping on rotten eggs, just thinking, damn man, it doesn't get any better than this. When you think about it, it really doesn't. He's completely content, not worried about a damn thing. He doesn't have to get up at 4.30 a.m. to sit in traffic for an hour and a half and spend his whole day doing some crazy shit to pull down enough Benjamins each week to pay for his cave and electricity. Hell, he's going to roll out of the rack about 3.30 p.m. and in for sound himself up a couple of fresh platters of venison innards and go fuck with some humans for a while. He'll probably go show all his homies his new bitchin' new rock clacker tree knock riff he came up with last night and then go get up the old lady, smack the kids around a bit, and before you know it, he'll probably head back up the hill, snap a couple deer necks, and get the rack. So think about it. Shit, that sounds like a hell of a fun day to me. It'd be just like camping or something, you know? They really have it that bad off? I don't think so. Maybe we're the ones who are kind of uh, got our heads up our asses. Yeah, I think Sasquatch have evolved just about as much as they want to evolve, and they've got it exactly the way they want it. So maybe uh, maybe we're the retards. Who knows? Anyway, let's get to the show tonight. We've got a really, really big show about a really big sky, about a really big hairy dude, and a really big asshole. So pour yourself a drink, grab yourself a seat. We're heading back to 1997. Um, we're going to go up to a place I can only describe as heaven on earth, Glacier Park, Montana. Well, Travis, well, let's start by uh, talking about your encounter then. How long ago did it take place? This happened July 30th of 1997. Okay, so what were you doing the, uh, right leading up to this event? Well, what happened, oh, it, it's kind of the same job that the gentleman you had from Tennessee on. We we did not work for the Forest Service. We were more like kind, kind of like laborers. Sort of contractors, huh? Yeah, not, not even that. I, one of my good friends from high school, would go up every summer and work with his uncle, who his uncle did work for the Forest Service at Glacier National Park. And I wanted to go every summer. My parents wouldn't let me. Finally, I'm old enough to make my own decisions. I had my own money. I went. Money was not good. 
but you know, got to camp out in Montana. The only thing that I hated doing was having to clean up dead animal carcasses. Other than that, I loved every everything about it. And uh, we more or less just did the crap jobs, if you want to be honest. Whatever was too cheap to pay a contractor to do and just you could send four young guys to go get it done, that's what we did. I got up there first week after Memorial Day weekend. And as I said, it was awesome. It was everything that I always dreamed Montana of being. To get to the incident, what had happened is it was actually July 27th. And are you familiar with Glacier National Park? I, I'm not, but I've been through Montana a few times. Well, in this certain area, um, it's now called BYU Idaho, but at the time it was Ridge College. There was the girls' volleyball team there was going to go do kind of like a just a coming together as a team, a camp out at Mount Stanton. That's kind of on the northeastern part of Glacier National Park. It's by Lake McDonald area. It's a really beautiful area. The girl, a couple of the girl volleyball players' dad was the gentleman who was getting it all together, and he had called ahead and said, hey, there's a couple dead mule carcasses up here, and it's kind of a trashy area. Can we get you know, somebody to come clean it up before you know the team gets there and whatnot? And I wanted nothing to do with it because... I could not even stand the smell of a dead animal carcass. It just made me sick. Right. My right. best friend, my best friend from school, wanted to go see the girls from the volleyball team. Unbeknownst to me, he volunteered us. Pissed me off. I was madder than hell. I did not care about the girls. I really did not like the smell. I didn't tell him I was mad. We. We got all our stuff together because when you go to areas like this for special little jobs, you go there and camp at the nearest forest station there. You just set up camp there, and if there's something for you to do, they send you to do the little job. We got there. We cleaned up the mule deer, set up some tents, had some dinner with the volleyball team. Fine, we did whatever. We went and fixed a couple trails around the area. The morning of July 30th, um, my buddy who I was there with, his uncle called and said, this was roughly around 5.40 in the morning. We always had to have a radio on that, uh, hey, the coach and the volleyball team and the three dads, they cleaned up camp because they said there was a horrible order, odor around the camp. And they kept fearing that there was a bear constantly just walking around the camp. So they all packed up and left like at three this morning. I need you guys to get over there and see what's going on. My head, I'm thinking I have to clean up another dead animal carcass. And I was pissed. Nothing of anything. I mean, nothing of a danger. You know, I didn't even care if a bear. I just was like, I have to clean up another dead animal carcass. Gosh dang it. Don't say nothing as we're driving over to the area. And this is right on the north side of Lake McDonald, which is right below Mount Stanton. And we get to the lake. You can instantly smell what just, it smelled like dead skunks. Like when you roll over, run over a skunk instantly in the area. And it was all over. We call um, my friend's uncle on the radio said we don't see nothing we can definitely smell it he told us that we needed to stay put in the truck he would be there in about an hour and then we would all kind of hike around to see maybe if a bear or something else had gotten got an animal or something and there's even reports that the wolverines were coming out so that was more of a fear that maybe a wolverine was attacking small smaller prey my buddy, you know, he's all like, well, hey, let's go walk around and see if we can see nothing. I won't lie. I was a jerk. I snapped back at him, and I said, your uncle said we're supposed to wait in the effing truck. We're not supposed to go out and do nothing. And he gave me a surprise look, and I said, well, I didn't even want to come here. I wish you wouldn't have volunteered us. And long story short is we got into a little bit of an argument, and he just took off walking. Or excuse me, he grabbed the bike, the mountain bike, out of the truck and started walking with it. 
And I was like, hey, you got the radio. I need the radio for when your uncle calls. I grabbed the mountain bike, went up behind him. We dropped the mountain bikes off, and we just started walking up the trail. It's called Grant's Trail for the Glacier Grant they have there. We started walking up the trail. My buddy uh, was roughly about 20 feet off to the left of me. I'm walking up. We're still kind of bickering a little bit, just snapping at each other. And I got kind of ahead of him up on the trail. I'm going walking, and if you can picture looking at a clock, at 10 o'clock, as I turned to look to my left where 10 o'clock would be, I just noticed a huge creature laying on its left side, and it looked it was tearing out the center of a tree. That's what it, that's, I just saw a piece of the tree come ripping out. And I stopped and stared at it for a second, and I saw where the head was on its side, looked at its whole body laying down, and the first words that came out of my mouth were, oh, my God, that's a Bigfoot. And I time stopped, time stood still. I don't know how else to describe it. And my buddy had walked up, and he goes, oh, my God, Travis, there's a Bigfoot. And it hurt us. Now, well, it was laying on its side, on its left side, and it looked like it was using its left arm to pick up the tree while it was digging it out. I remember the tree just dropping. Take a look, turning the whole upper part of his left body. And as I was telling Wes earlier, the only way I can describe how fast he exploded from where he was laying down is when you blow a balloon all the way up and you let the balloon go, how fast it just twirls. That's how fast he got up. And he jumped up right by the tree, this huge tree that was laying on the ground. And he looked directly at me. He had caramel, dark brown eyes. I don't, I never heard anything. I don't remember hearing anything. He looked me in the eyes and I instantly felt like I was going to throw up. And I just stood. According to my friend, he said he was growling the whole time. I never heard it. I had the radio at that time and some static from the radio came in because someone was trying to call on the radio. And that snapped me out of it. And whatever it did, whatever that static did, it set this Bigfoot Sasquatch creature, evil thing, whatever, into an ungodly rage. He just started shaking from left to right with his upper part of his body. Then I heard the roar, and there ain't, I can't describe it. It. I ran first. I took off. And I was crying. I, I had tears flying down my eyes because I, the ghost in the bedroom was true. Behind the clubs or, you know, every horror story you ever realize, it's true. My buddy was walking be, or running behind me, and this is the only thing we can think of. Because when I turn and look back, he was already to the area that we were standing at. And, my God, it took him maybe a second and a half. And my buddy just sprayed his little, they gave us little cans of mace if we came across any mountain lions or cougars or anything. And he just sprayed the mace, and we think that he ran into it. That's the only thing we can stop because he, he slowed up. I ran to the left towards Stanton Lake. I yelled at my friend that, I'm jumping in the lake, I'm jumping in the lake, I'm jumping in the lake. And I did, which was stupid because the ridge was about 15 feet off the air and the lake was only like three feet deep. And I sprained the hell out of my left ankle, but my buddy slid down the ridge. We saw it. I saw it standing at top of the ridge and it just picked up a little baseball sized rock under more underhand sidearm went right at me and it went right over my head and 
I saw that my buddy was running around to the bike. I was screaming at him to please wait. I got to the other side of the lake. I never saw it. Um, I was completely wet. And I'll tell you, there's two different kind of fears. When my buddy got to the bikes about eight, eight seconds before I did, and he left, I was terrified because I, I'm behind him now. I'm now, if this thing's chasing after us, I'm the one that's there for him to grab. And so I started screaming, wait, wait, wait. And he, he wasn't waiting. And got to the bike. We got back to the truck. He told me to call his uncle on the radio, and I said I dropped it in the lake. We left the bike, took off in the truck. Um, we met his uncle on the right down by the Forest Service by Grant Glacier. Um, his uncle is First Nation tribe. Um, we told him our experience. He didn't talk to me. He talked to my his nephew, my friend, and it was that way for the next day and a half. And Wes, this is going to kind of get into your buddy. My buddy. <laughs> well, I tried to call and see if I can get more. After I talked to you, I started making phone calls, and it's still the same thing that they know. Um, we started to, The uncle would never talk to me, and I don't know if it's just because I wasn't of a tribe. He would talk to my friend, and my friend's like, he's just telling us we kind of got lucky, and we just kind of came upon a rogue one, and... I was like, a real one, and I told my buddy, we just came across a Bigfoot and it chased us. This ain't, you know, just something random, a bear and a cub. This is a Bigfoot. And he's like, oh, I know. He's not really telling me nothing. And I said, you guys were just over there talking for like two and a half hours. What were you guys talking about? Says he knows them from around the mountain. Some of them come from Canada. And throughout the year i mean sometimes you see him sometimes you don't and i'm i almost he does not want me saying his name now i called him this afternoon he just wants me to call him his friend but i was like you understand that we just got chased by a bigfoot and i started crying again i said it, it, what why am i the only one who's realizing how scary this really is and he's all like i don't know what to tell you he's not telling me nothing and so I went up and asked him and he said it's probably the same one that the same Sasquatch that or I, excuse me he calls them Chiantes he doesn't call them Sasquatches he calls them Chiantes um, that killed um, two campers back in 1994 um, they knew that uh, Chiante did it they're very well aware. And so when I heard your gentleman the other night talk about the paper going out from Glacier National Park, I'm almost positive that has to be the same incident because that's what was told to us. The uncle just kept telling us, don't say nothing. People are going to make fun of you. I mean, you know, fill it out. Just relax. Go take the next two days off. I couldn't. I I call my mom and talk to her and I couldn't get a hold of her and I just kept crying. I don't I'm not a crier, but I just kept crying. I don't know why. And I remember everywhere it it's it was surreal. Like everything I knew in life didn't exist anymore. My whole life was completely different now. I don't I don't really remember that part of my life anymore. Going to the bathroom has a whole new meaning out in the wilderness. Um, walking to the car out in the wilderness in the middle of the night has a whole new meaning to it. Let's talk a little bit about the bearded guy. So how, how did he come into the picture? So on August 2nd, the, you had to pay for the campsites. Um, the volleyball team paid for this area. And it was like, $800 for the thing they paid for. I let it out. I started telling people, guys, we're not chased by a Bigfoot up there. I think these guys were having a Bigfoot around it. Instantly started getting made fun of. August 2nd, right at 9 a.m., 
Gary Callahan is his name. Pulled up in the new um, Ford Explorer Sport models, a 1997, everything. I know it because I wanted one of these kind of vehicles. And he got out, and I remember thinking, God, that's a big guy. My buddy's uncle goes, oh, God. And he's like, do not fight with this guy. Do not argue with this guy. Just say your P's and Q's in front of everybody. I mean, oh, I think there was like 20 people out there. He's all like, where's the two effing idiots that can't tear a, tell a bear and a deer apart? And I didn't know he was talking about us, truthfully. And everybody pointed over towards us. And he came right on me. And he's like, you really don't know the difference between an effing bear and a, he kept saying mule deer. And I just stared at him and he's like, what? Why are you telling everybody some elaborate story? And he kept saying it for everybody in the area to hear. And it was embarrassing as all get out. It was terrifying at the same thing. I very rarely have to look up at guys. I'm 6'4 myself. And I just said, sir, if that was a bear, that was the most deformed looking bear I've ever seen. And he goes, maybe your eyes are the ones that are deformed. My friend's uncle came around and he's like, Gary, come here. And, and he goes, why are you starting all this crap? I'm getting called up here. I don't want to be up here. And now I got to go check out this bear because two idiots think they know what they're talking about. It was just comments that he, he would say it loud enough for everyone to hear how ridiculous it was for us to suggest that it was a Sasquatch. And um, he was not happy that his name got out. I do know that. And he's all like, what's my name? You know my name. It's Bear. Don't say Gary. He said that to the uncle. That's why when I heard you guys start talking about it, I was like, that has to be the same guy. Let me ask you something. Wes mentioned to me that actually his father had some sort of uh, an incident there. Is that correct? Correct. Todd Callahan. Now, when his uncle drove us down to Billings to fly home, I begged him. To this day, Will, I still don't know. It still makes me mad. It was only years later of just constantly calling that they finally started opening and telling me things of what they believe of the cannibal thing. But he said that this guy is kind of a known guy for him because his dad is the only known man to actually produce a body with two scout, two First Nation scouts. And he presented it to the Army and the Forest Service in the 30s, in the, right before the 1940. And it was documented pictures. Back then, I mean, you're probably familiar with this. People, like people say, why aren't there more stories of it in the old days? Because it wasn't known as to be this mysterious animal. It was known. People knew it was there. It wasn't talked about as, man, there's something out in this woods. People knew it as a booger, whatever it was called. People knew it existed. So it was just kind of a common story, but he produced a body that kind of made him more of an expert. And apparently his son, Gary, picked up that knowledge and knows apparently everything about him. Do you happen to know what agency he works for? I tried to find that out because I knew you were going to ask me that. I don't. And I have not seen him since August 2nd of 1997. I tried calling everybody this afternoon. No one called me back. I will keep finding out, um, and I will get it right to you. Okay. And we we did have a police officer that photographed, and I'm sure it's the same individual and his partner, photo, photographed their vehicle with the plates and ran the plates, and it came back Homeland Security. Yeah, that's what um, Wes was telling me earlier. When he pulled up at this time, I don't – the it, the only reason I know the Ford Explorer is because I wanted one. And it was 
the dark black, everything. I was like, oh, that's the new sport. I want that. And it had government plates. And if you remember what the old government plate was, it was where it was the big U.S. government letters on it. And and it did not have Montana sticker on there. It just said U.S. government. Again, I tried to call everyone today, and no one called me back. But I will keep trying to find out if they know anything. But I do know his name is Gary Callahan, and he grew up in Dillon, Montana. And I don't care if he's listening to this because he intimidated me once, and he will never do it again. Yeah, I probably would have punched him in the mouth if he had come up on me like that. But I know you were younger at the time, but um, you come up standing over over the top of me, and you're probably going to get it in the mouth. Uh, especially the way he was talking to you. and But you know what's interesting about that, Travis, is that tactic, he really hasn't changed his tactic over like the last 18 years. He hasn't changed his tactic. It's the same type of tactic. He uh, kind of calls you out in front of everyone. He stands over the top of you like he's a tough guy. I'm telling you, man, guys like this, they can foster badge all they want, but they might come across a guy who's not going to put up with it. He's not going to put up with this crap. Well, it, it always just bugged me because he never went to my friend. He, It was me. And I Any thoughts on why he came to you? Because I was the one talking. To this day, it's still, I mean, my buddy and his uncle, they kept to themselves. I still want, I have so many questions that, what was it doing with the tree? I mean, his uncle told me that, you know, they when they're rogue like that, they'll dig out trees, and that's where they hide because they're by themselves. Well, what? why would they do that? Is that are you just telling me something to just tell me it? That doesn't make sense to me. This thing was huge. It's not going to fit in a tree. I mean, was it making I, I would have said I would have said more like looking for bugs or something to eat. Well, it's like every... I had actually sent you an email before because I have never let it go. And I know they want me to. I never will let it go. I firmly believe you guys are the voice for the truth, if that sounds right, without being corny. I know I've wanted for a long time to just scream and say, I had this happen to me and I've stood alone long enough. I need help because it has controlled my life and... My wife is the one who actually found your guys' show, and it has been a godsend. It, it feels good to say they know. They know the size of the muscles on this thing. They're, they're no joke. But the Gary Callahan character, um, I'm trying to remember now. I believe the only thing he had for his credentials was that his dad was a good tractor a, an original tractor that the first nations or excuse me the sioux were the he was one of the first white men that they embraced they said he had the skills of not a usual plain skin tractor he had natural instincts and that everything was passed on to his son and his son is someone who is an expert at it I'd love to get this guy on the phone. Get him on the phone and start questioning this guy. It may happen after this. <laughs> yeah. Gary uh, Callahan, huh? Gary Callahan, nicknamed there. His father is Todd Callahan. He grew up in Dillon, Montana. Very nasty. He's always been nasty. Wes, I think my buddy's uncle will talk to you. I think he will, and you too will. Um, I promise, I think he'll be more honest and open with you guys. I know he just wants me to forget, but I can't. I can't. This is the kind of encounter you don't forget. You never forget. No. I don't think it's possible to forget it. it. I mean, everybody tells me they know you're there. Everybody says there's no way you're ever going to not, they're not going to know you're there. Yeah, I don't I'm believe that. You, this thing was chopped. Well, no, excuse me, shot. When it turned to the left, it, I remember the tree falling, and then it just like slowly turned to the left, and it exploded up. And it stared directly at me. 
And I went, my God, that thing is huge. Oh, no, I think I it's possible to to come up on them without them being aware of you. You know, especially if they're focused like that one was doing whatever it was doing. And I was going to ask you, did, did the material that was pulling out with the tree, did it look rotten? Yes. Yes. Yeah, my guess it was probably looking for insects to eat. Well, the muscles on this thing, uh, th- that's the honest the thing I've never forgotten. It was It was more grayish. But it was hair, and there was part of it, when it was laying on its side, you could see the back part of it was matted, real bad. Right. And the first two that I ran across, that's what I said. The hair the hair was, it was dirty and matted. Bad, bad. Yeah, right. And it stunk like nothing you would believe. I want to thank you for coming on the show, Travis. Thanks for sharing your encounter, and thanks for providing us with the uh, information with, for uh, Gary Callahan. We should do like a uh, roundtable with Gary Callahan and Bob Garrett. I wonder how that would go, Will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good one. Bring Jack on, you know, a few other people. Yeah, that he's kind of bring on. a few. Yeah, bring a few police officers on. He's pissed off and. Uh, Bring it, bring it, fan club on. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we he should... is listening to this and he's clicking in, have the balls and come on now. Yeah. Sorry, may not be appropriate, but. No, I think he likes. Other thing. I think he likes yelling at younger guys that uh, probably aren't going to speak back to him. You know, I think that's kind of more his forte. But uh, you know what, our fans should do is uh, contact Gary Callahan. Billings, Montana. Father's Todd Callahan. Watch.